Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are tuning in today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is the next episode of A Voice from the Ever Change Meditation Program. And today I will be offering a guided meditation on embracing change in the body or acknowledging change in the, the body. This is part of a three-part series on impermanence. When I say three parts, it, that means there'll be uh, three stages. Uh, we'll actually spend about a month on this. Now, if you were with me last week, we did change in the external world, starting from the planets and stars, the celestial bodies, all the way to the very minute changes in our day-to-day -day experience. That's all considered external world. And today, we'll be going a little bit closer to home. We'll be coming into the body and uh, contemplating all of the change that arises in our physical body. That's stage two, and we'll spend a couple of weeks on that, perhaps, maybe a week and a half. Uh, there's a couple of different uh, guided meditations that I'll be offering uh, on that. Um, so stay tuned for more detail on that. Uh, stage three, we go uh, and enter a little bit closer to home than the body. We go into the mind, into the heart, uh, and contemplating all of the changes in our beliefs, our values, our truths, ideas, and so forth like that. So it's a three-stage practice. Uh, then at the end of it all, we bring all of the stages together uh, and contemplate all of it at the same time. And we'll get more into that as the weeks unfold here. Now, before I offer this guided meditation, I do have a few announcements to make. So if you've heard these before, I'm sorry. There is a new announcement, though, one that I'm sure you haven't heard. So uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> but first, uh, I'd like to announce that I am offering an online retreat. Uh, I've teamed up with a really beautiful healing uh, teaching website called Contemplative Light. They've invited me to offer a retreat through their website. So I'm, uh, it's on my website and their website. My website is suchsweetthunder.org. Their website is contemplativelight.com. Uh, this retreat is entitled Such Sweet Thunder. This is a mindfulness practice where we bring mindfulness to all aspects of the present moment. And then we turn and embrace the present moment with an open heart. I call this a radical embrace of now. It's a beautiful practice. Uh, this runs from October 17th to November 14th. Now, if you notice, I timed it over the election. So if you're tuning in from the United States, uh, this might be just the thing you need as a respite from uh, the tension, the division uh, that's arising politically throughout the nation. Uh, this could be a really great uh, way to reduce stress that might be building uh, from that and the COVID crisis as well. Now, in this retreat, we're only meeting twice a week. Uh, on Wednesdays and Saturdays, that's at 7 p.m. Pacific Coast time of the United States. That's actually Thursday and Sunday mornings here in Asia. Uh, we'll be meeting via Zoom uh, for 90 minutes each of those sessions. Uh, once a week, and this is a rough outline, once a week we'll be doing guided meditations and then the alternate session, uh, probably on Wednesdays, we'll be doing Q&A, kind of a study group uh, where we have a discussion on the topics being offered. I'll also be using my book, Such Sweet Thunder, as a um, reference, as a guide through the retreat. So you'll have that, have that to uh, work through as a workbook. So do sign up for that. Again, that's on my website, suchsweetthunder.org, or you can find it here on Facebook. If you scroll through my page, uh, there will be a, a link that you click on, and you can uh, uh, sign up for the retreat there. I'm also currently accepting applications for one-on-one -on -one studies. 
So if you're interested in deepening a currently existing meditation practice or starting a meditation practice, uh, both are appropriate. I see many people who are beginning practices and many people who are ongoing with meditation. Uh, so I, I, I love to teach both beginners and advanced students. So both are welcome, all are welcome. Uh, and you can find out more detail about what I offer online, again, at my website, suchsweetthunder.org, on the online studies page of the website there. Uh, so, um, yeah, have a look. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, send me an email through the website, or you can message me here on Facebook, and we'll set something up. Now, here's the announcement that I haven't made yet uh, in previous episodes. This is new. Uh, I am honored to announce that I've been invited back to Chiang Mai Holistic in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So if you're living here in Thailand, that is for you. Uh, these won't be recorded, at least as far as I know. They won't be live streamed. Uh, this is a Loving Kindness Weekly uh, this starts uh, next Wednesday, October 7th, uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. It's just one hour. It's donation-based only. Uh, so he, again, if you're here in Chiang Mai, Thailand, please do come by to Chiang Mai Holistic. Uh, we'll be uh, going through the loving-kindness practice systematically, the way I offer for most of my teachings. <laughs> uh, we'll do loving-kindness for the self, then next, the week after that, we go to loving kindness for a loved one, uh, loving kindness to a stranger. The following week, loving kindness to a perceived enemy or a challenging person. Uh, and eventually, expanding our loving kindness to the entire world. And we do that over the course of six weeks. So hope to see you all there, my fellow neighbors and friends here, here in Thailand. Uh, looking forward to that very, very much. Okay. On to impermanence, change in the body. Now there are two ways, two guided meditations that I'll be offering on this uh, today and then on uh, Sunday evening or Monday morning, depending on where you're tuning in, I'll be offering the second of the two. The first method that's often used to note change in the body is a very thorough body scanning practice. And we note pleasant feeling tone, unpleasant feeling tone, or neutral feeling tones arising throughout the body. And then we examine how those feeling tones shift, fluctuate, and change. It can be really relieving if you have some ache or pain in the body noticing how that changes and shifts over time, and so forth. Now, that's not the practice we're doing today. That's the practice I'll be doing after the weekend. The practice we're doing today uh, will be contemplating and meditating on the changes that have occurred within our body throughout the course of our lifetime. Now, the key phrase of this meditation and all of the impermanence meditation practices that I'm offering is everything changes, nothing stays the same. So I request that if you find that you get distracted during the meditation by your thoughts, bring yourself back to the meditation and say this phrase to yourself, everything changes, nothing stays the same, including our focus, including our ability to concentrate. So the, the wandering mind can be seen uh, as an example of impermanence, of change, noticing how our concentration, our awareness fluctuates. Everything changes, nothing stays the same. And the reason for the key phrase, that pointer phrase, is that so when you're off the meditation cushion, when you're out in your everyday life, you can just Say this phrase to yourself every now and then throughout the day. Everything changes, nothing stays the same. And the experiences that you're learning from during the meditation, the insights that you're gleaning as a result of this meditation will then become available simply as a result of posing this phrase to yourself. So that's a really wonderful way uh, to continue practicing 
uh, even when you're not meditating, continuing to bring the awareness of impermanence into your everyday life. There is also a pointer question as a part of this practice. So uh, towards the end of the meditation, I will ask a pointer question. This is in the meditation itself. Don't try to answer the question with your verbal mind, with a concept, that'll just get in the way. But allow the question to guide your awareness wherever your awareness may want to be brought to as a result of the question. And that question is, where does the experience of change arise? And so we use that question to bring deeper into the experience of change itself. Where does the experience of change arise? Now, I'll give a little hint about this. Um, this is kind of the same as the old philosophical question, if a tree fell in the forest, would there be any sound to that falling of the tree? And if there was nobody in the forest. So if there's nobody in the forest, actually there would be no sound, at least according to the contemplative traditions, because sound requires a nervous system to perceive it in order to manifest sound. So where does the change take place? Where does the experience of change arise? It's not in the body per se. It's not in the experience itself. It's in the perception. So that's quite important. And again, we don't want to get too bogged down in concept here. Simply allow the pointer to guide your awareness like that. So we'll open the meditation much in the same way most of my meditations unfold at the beginning. We'll start with the breath, We'll come into the body. We'll just do a brief body scan. We'll get a good feel for the body, how it exists, how it looks, and how it feels today, present moment body. And then we'll compare that to what our body looked and felt like five years ago. We'll observe the hair, the face, the fingernails, the toenails, the muscles, the bones, comparing all of that present day to five years ago, and then 10 years ago, and then 15 years ago, and so forth. So hold an awareness like that, noting the changes that have occurred in our physical body every five years, starting from present back to when we were a five-year-old. You are. That might be a long process or a short process. For me, it's rather long. Uh, and so it's, there's no right or wrong about that. This practice is really designed to free us from trying to find lasting happiness in the body, right? There's so much cultural conditioning about this, how we should look a particular way how we should feel a particular way. So one of the most profound effects of this type of meditation is that it frees us from that cultural conditioning. We really begin to know on a very visceral level that the body is fleeting and impermanent. We stop seeking happiness where it cannot be found. We become very comfortable with the changes that are occurring within the body. Now, as we do this practice, particularly if you continue with this practice after today and you take this practice up for maybe a week or two, you may come face to face with long held unconscious beliefs and patterns. This can give rise to fear or anger or any other type of emotional reaction. If you feel fear or anger arise during the meditation practice, hold that reaction in present moment awareness. Don't ignore it. Don't try to push it away or resolve it. You don't need to analyze it. 
Simply acknowledge that it's there and hold it in your awareness. Now when I say hold the emotion in present moment awareness, the idea is to hold it and to actually also hear the sounds of the present moment at the same time, feeling the body, the rest of the body in addition to the emotion. If there are stories about the emotion that arise, we let those stories go. And just experience the visceral experience of the emotion that's arising. Now that can happen. It doesn't always happen. So if you go through this practice and you actually feel really good or great, or there's not much emotional response at all, it's not that you're doing it wrong. Uh, it's just that that's not what's arising for you. And so we don't try to force that or we don't need to go looking for any particular reactive emotional material. Again, if that fear arises or anger arises, we're not trying to overcome fear or anger, but merely trying to stay present in it. So we gradually learn to open more and more to our emotions. Now, meditating on change and impermanence is not always a negative experience. We don't always encounter fear, as I just mentioned, or anger. In fact, uh, one of my favorite teachers, Pema Chodron, tells a great story about this, where uh, she was involved in a prison outreach program. Uh, and so she was teaching meditation uh, to, to prisoners in jail. And she was working with one prisoner on the practices of impermanence. Pardon me. And uh, she had given a few sessions, and then she went back one day, and the prisoner immediately when he saw, saw her said, you know, I really love this impermanence practice. <laughs> because it's allowing us to know, again, on that very visceral level, to know that everything changes, that nothing stays the same. And so if you find that you're in a place uh, that you don't wish to be, prison, for example, or the hospital, or in a relationship that you wish you could get out of, or in a lockdown situation due to COVID-19, or in a political climate that you find distasteful. Everything changes, nothing stays the same. So if you're suffering in some way, broken bones, illness, so forth, know that that too is impermanent. In fact, impermanence and change is what makes room for growth and development. Okay, so I think that's all I want to say. I did do an exhaustive introduction on change and impermanence practice. So, uh, so that would be two episodes ago. So if you're interested in that, uh, send me a message and let me know and I can send you a link to that video or you can simply scroll down on my Facebook, Instagram, or on YouTube and you can find previous episodes there. Now, you don't have to have seen that to receive benefit from today's offering. Uh, but in case you'd like to supplement today's offering with that, it's there for you. Okay, I hope you enjoy this guided meditation on impermanence and change in the body. So allowing the body to rest. Allowing the muscles to relax and grow soft. Letting any tension or stress that's held in the body go. And allowing the mind and heart to rest. Just coming into this present moment experience. And as you breathe in and breathe out, bringing awareness and attention to the breath 
as it enters and leaves the nose. There might be a cool or a dry sensation arising from the nose. But the quality of sensation doesn't matter. Simply rest, noticing any sensation arising from the nostrils as you breathe in and breathe out. And allowing awareness to expand to include the back of the throat. Noticing the breath as it touches the back of the throat. You might simply notice the temperature changing from cooler to warmer as you inhale and exhale, as the breath touches the nose and the back of the throat. And breathing in and breathing out, allowing awareness to expand again to include the rib cage expanding and contracting with each breath. You might notice sensations of clothing moving to adjust with the rising and falling of the body as you inhale and exhale. You might also notice the shoulders rising and falling with each breath. Allowing awareness to expand to include the upper back moving out as you breathe in and in as you breathe out. Allowing awareness to expand to include the abdomen rising and falling with each breath. Noticing the lower back moving out as you breathe in and in as you breathe out. And so we'll rest right there with the experience of breathing, allowing thoughts to subside as much as possible simply resting with the breath. And now while maintaining awareness on the sensations of the breathing process, from the nose to the abdomen, the abdomen to the nose, you might also notice sensations of feet against the mat or the floor. You might also notice sensations of clothing against the legs. Noticing the weight of the body against the cushion or chair mat or floor. There might also be sensations arising as clothing against the back. Noticing the hands resting against the body or touching each other. the arms resting against the body. There might be sensations of clothing against the shoulders. You might also notice sensations arising from the back of the neck, the sides of the neck. Sensations arising from the back of the head and the ears. 
noticing any sensations arising throughout the cheeks of the face. The lips and the nose, the eyes and the forehead. Noticing any sensations arising from the crown of the head, the very top of the head. And while resting there with the experience of breath and body, you might also notice the sounds of the present moment. not focusing on any one sound in particular, but noticing the entire field of sound, hearing all of the sounds at the same time. Not labeling or noticing if each sound is pleasant or unpleasant, but Simply noticing how each sound finds its perfect place in the symphony of the present moment. You might notice how the sounds also reflect very clearly the concept of impermanence and change. Each sound is born and moves through the present moment, fluctuating and ending. So we'll rest right there just for a few moments. Maintaining open, spacious awareness. Sensations of the breath and body, silence and sound. And just rest. Just rest. Now, while resting in this present moment, we'll begin contemplating and getting a feel for our body, our physical human body. You don't need to open your eyes or look at the body, just feel body or visualize the body is fine here. Noticing your fingernails and toenails. Noticing the hair or lack of hair. Noticing your skin, the tone of the skin, the texture of the skin. And in the silence of meditation, try to recall what your body felt like five years ago. The skin, the hair, the 
noticing change and texture of the skin, perhaps the elasticity has changed, the tone may have changed. You might have more or less hair. Your hair might be a different color. Noticing the fingernails and toenails, are they stronger or weaker now than they were five years ago? Longer or shorter? Noticing the muscles of the body present day. Are they more flexible than five years ago? Less flexible? Are they stronger or weaker? Perhaps they're pretty much the same. Contemplate the bones of the body. Stronger or weaker, more brittle, less brittle. Do the joints ache now when you move? They didn't five years ago. Contemplate the organs of the body, stomach, heart, liver, intestines. Do you notice any change there, present day to five years ago? Can you eat the same foods or different foods, perhaps? Spicy foods now bother you when they didn't before. Notice your height and weight present day and compare the height and weight to five years ago. Perhaps you've gained some weight or lost some weight. Gained muscle or lost muscle. And just sit with these changes for a few moments, contemplating the present moment body to five years ago body. And as you inhale and exhale, maintaining awareness in this present moment, begin to contemplate your present moment body with what your body looked and felt like 10 years ago. Noticing the change in the hair Longer, shorter, different color, thinner, thicker. Change in the skin, maybe you've developed wrinkles from 10 years ago to now. Tone and elasticity may have changed, fluctuated considerably in the last 10 years, I know mine has.
contemplating the muscles. Perhaps your muscles have changed considerably from 10 years ago body to present day body. Perhaps they're more firm and stronger now, or less firm and a little bit weaker. Noticing the change in the bones and joints. Perhaps you could do things 10 years ago without getting stiff. Noticing the change there. How long you could walk or run. Perhaps it's easier to stand now than it was before, or perhaps it's a little more difficult to stand now than it was 10 years ago from a seated position. Or if you've been taking up yoga, noticing how more flexible you are now as a result of ho holding a lotus posture or balancing poses. Noticing the change in the organs from present day to 10 years ago. Perhaps when you walk up a flight of stairs now, there's a difference to when you walked up a flight of sta stairs 10 years ago in the lungs, in the heart. Oftentimes people carry anxiety in their stomach. Notice the change in the stomach from 10 years ago to now. Stomach and intestines. Contemplating changes in height and weight. Present moment body to 10 years ago body. Are you heavier or lighter? Just hold these contemplations, present moment body, to 10 years ago body. If you feel any emotional reactivity arise as a result of these contemplations, hold the emotion in present moment awareness. Hold the emotion while you're holding the breath and body, sounds, all at the same time. as you breathe in and breathe out, try to recall what your body looked and felt like 15 years ago. That would be 2005. Begin to compare and contrast, noting all of the changes 
in the physical body present day to the physical body 15 years ago. Are the fingernails and toenails different? The strength in the toenails and fingernails changed, altered in some way? Notice the skin quality. Is your skin tone different? More or less tan or pale? Noticing and comparing the hair of present day body to 15 years ago. Do you have more hair or less hair? stronger hair or weaker hair? Has the hair color changed? Contemplating the muscles of the body, the muscle tone might be quite different present body to 15 years ago stronger or weaker, firm or loose. You might be more flexible now or less flexible now. Remember, we don't want to judge the body or judge the changes. Simply the experience. Everything changes, nothing stays the same. It's not personal. This is the law of nature. our bones, present day body to 15 years ago body, stronger or weaker, frail or upright. The organs of the body, noticing how certain stresses of the body affect current body organs as opposed to 15 years ago, running long distances, walking a flight of stairs. Eating spicy foods. Contemplating the height and weight 15 years ago to present day body, comparing and contrasting. More weight, less weight, were you taller, shorter? And simply rest there for a few moments, contemplating all of the change that has occurred in the physical body from 15 years ago to present day, present moment body. Now, in your mind's eye, recalling your body 20 years ago. We'll go through the same contemplation. 
noticing the hair and skin of you 20 years ago and comparing that to present day body, hair and skin. Noticing the tone of the skin, the clarity of the skin, the elasticity of the skin. How has it changed? The hair, perhaps the color has changed, more or less hair. The length or hairstyle may have changed. color might be different. Noticing the fingernails and toenails, how do they differ from present moment body to 20 years ago body? Contemplating the muscles of the present moment body to the body you had 20 years ago. Noticing if they're stronger now or weaker. Perhaps they're more firm now or loose. Do the muscles ache now after physical exercise the way they didn't before 20 years ago? Noticing the bones and joints of the body, how are they different? Present moment body to 20 years ago body. Noticing the organs, the heart, the lungs. Do they respond equally now, better now, or a little bit weaker now than they were 20 years ago? When doing physical exertion or encountering a stressful situation, Noticing the height and weight of your current body, comparing that to the height and weight of your body 20 years ago. Taller, shorter, heavier, lighter. Noticing all of the changes that have taken place in the physical body from 20 years ago to present day. Everything changes, nothing stays the same. Do the same practice with your body 25 years ago. And 30 years ago.
35 years ago, all the way back to when you were a five-year-old. Contemplating all of the change in your physical from five-year-old you to your present moment body. Where does the experience of change take place? Don't try to answer this question, but allow the question to bring you deeper into the experience of change itself. Holding all of the changes in the body from five-year-old you to present moment body. Where does the experience of change take place? Rest in the experience of change. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. That was my guided meditation offering on change and impermanence. Uh, this is part two of a three-part series. This was noting and embracing change and impermanence in the physical body. Uh, again, the this, this stage one was change in the external world. Stage two, physical body. Stage three will be our mental and emotional body changes. Uh, so I think that's all I want to say about all of that. So thanks again for joining me. Um, I will be back after the weekend on uh, Sunday evening in the United States or in, the, in Americas, uh, Monday here in Asia, Monday morning. Uh, for another guided meditation through the body on impermanence, but this one is completely different. It comes from a different tradition, but pointing at the same lesson. So uh, it's just a, another angle at approaching change and impermanence in the body. So I hope to see you all there. Stay safe, stay clean, stay healthy, wash your hands, wear your masks, uh, practice your social distancing. And I will see you all at uh, the other side of the weekend. Have a great and beautiful weekend.
Thank you so much.